the Darklands. The Box, Scott D. Ford. Was this your husband, Mrs. Timmons? I know this is hard, and with the accident it makes it even tougher, but we need a positive ID. So look for birthmarks or anything that you can be sure by. That tattoo! Oh, Ted! Close up the drawer, Sam. That's a positive ID. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Timmons. So much damage. Will we be able to have an open casket? That's something to ask your mortician, Mrs. Timmons. I'm just a morgue tech. But honestly, I've seen worse. They can work miracles nowadays. Thank you. And thank you, officer. You're both so kind. Thank you, Mrs. Timmons. <laughs> Sam. The drawer. Oh, sorry. Could I just... You want another moment with your husband before we... If you wouldn't mind. I'll only be a few minutes. I... I just want to say goodbye. Of course, Mrs. Timmons. We'll be right outside. Thank you, boys. Don't rush me next time. I was trying to be sensitive. <clears throat> I hate to say I told you so, but you never could put down the bottle. And over Sandstone Mountain, too. You never were a smart man, Ted. At least you didn't kill anyone but yourself. I wish I could say I was sorry, Ted, but you pretty much did this to yourself, like always. But it was never your fault. According to you, it was my fault. Always. And I'm the one that suffered for it. Not you. Ever. Dead is dead, so I won't speak no ill of you. Seeing you like this makes me remember that you weren't always bad. So, for the few good times we had... <gasps> Ted, t Ted, you're... I'm here, Betty. And whatever you hear, whatever they say, don't believe them. What? Ted, how are you alive? Technically, I'm not. But we don't have much time, and they're coming. So shut up and listen to me, Betty. But you're dead! Betty, we do not have time for this. Just remember, no matter what they say, you can't agree to let them take me. You can't let them put me in the box. I don't understand, Ted. The car crash... Stop being stupid and listen. They're coming, and when they get here, they're gonna take me away. You can't let that happen. Stop it, Ted. Stop it. You're dead. <laughs> oh. Right. Hush, baby. I know this is hard for you. They're after me, and they'll be here soon, so I need you to listen to me. Whatever you do, whatever it takes, no matter what, promise me you won't let them put me back in that box. But Ted, why? What's wrong? It hurts, Betty. It doesn't just hurt. It's the hurt of all hurts. I've been screaming, and no one could help me since the accident. Now I've got you again. So promise me, but Ted, I don't know how to explain this, but it's hell, okay? If you don't help me, they'll send me to hell, and it hurts. Now don't let them put me back in that box! Okay, okay, I, I promise. But who is after you? Who are they? That would be us, Mrs. Timmons. Ah, crap. Well, who are you? I'm Agent Smith, and this is Agent Jones. We're with the IRS. The Infernal Revenue Service. You've got to be kidding me. Not at all, Mrs. Timmons. Certainly, you are aware that when you die, you have to pay for your sins. Don't let them take me. I... I don't understand. Please, Mrs. Timmons. You weren't meant to see this. I'm not sure of what I'm seeing, or if any of it's real. It's real. And it hurts. Don't let them take me. Mrs. Timmons, I know this is confusing for you. But this is normal. It happens every day. You just don't see it. You weren't meant to see it. This is a part of life that comes after you've gone. But who are you? I told you. 
We're agents of the Infernal Revenue Service. Look, Mrs. Timmons... Don't let him touch you. It's a trick. Don't listen to the recently deceased Mrs. Timmons. They often become confused. Can't tell the real world from the in-between they're trapped in. So you people do what exactly? We are the processors for God's way station. No one gets to go to the great reward without getting by us first. You might say we work for St. Peter and the Pearly Gates. So Ted is going to heaven? <laughs> Mrs. Timmons, that's complicated. See? They aren't angels. They're here to send me to hell. Well now, Ted, it's not as though you don't deserve some punishment. You weren't always a good boy, Ted. No one's perfect, Agent Jones. True, Mrs. Timmons. But old Ted here didn't even come close to perfect. Hell, you'd be hard-pressed to call him a decent human being by almost any objective measure. So, if you'll just step outside, we'll make sure Ted gets to where he's going. Thank you. Get your hands off of me, and hold on just a second here. We really don't have time for this. Well, you make time, young lady, because it seems like I get some kind of say here, and I am not going anywhere until somebody tells me what is going on. Fine. We'll do it your way if it makes it easier. Ted here needs a cosmic timeout. <sighs> time for Ted to go to the principal's office. Pappy wants to take Ted out behind the woodshed. Any of those working for you? I get it. He's never been an angel. So true, Mrs. Timmons. But I wonder if you know the extent of Ted's transgressions, shall we call them? Don't. Please don't do this to her. And why shouldn't we, Ted? Aren't they things that you're proud to have your wife know? Or are there things so horrible about you that even she can't know them? Things you hoped would be just between you and God. What is she talking about, Ted? Betty, it was a long time ago. Twenty-three years, three months and two days ago to be exact. If I choose only the specific event to which you refer, what was she, Ted? Sixteen, maybe? Ted? Betty, I swear. The rain Talmage, born September 11. Well, we all know how old she was. Your babysitter, wasn't she? Ted! It's an old story, Mrs. Timmons. You can't really be mad at Ted. She was young and naive. He was, well, horny. You left them alone. What did you think was going to happen? Oh, my God. And God is trying to help you now, Ted. But you have to face what you've done. The sins we pile up ton by ton, we must pay for one by one. And it's not as though you didn't suspect something now, is it, Betty? All those thoughts, those nights he said he was tired. What did you really think? Betty, I swear to God. That's a dangerous thing for you to be doing right now, Ted. Stay out of this hell spawn. April 1993, the 23rd, 3.45 p.m., Ted. Lasted about six minutes. You bastard. What is he talking about? Think about it for a minute, dear. Does that date mean anything to you? That's the day my father died. He was in the home and I had to run out for... Oh, no. Oh, my God, no. Betty, you have to understand. You were so right, Ted. Only you noticed the crimp in the IV tube. But you didn't say a word. It was just enough to stop the flow of medicines that were keeping him alive. You didn't. Betty, they were going to take the business away. We'd have lost everything. That had to come first. He let your father die for the money, Betty. It happens. It happens a lot, actually. And Ted, Daddy is waiting for you on the other side. And he's got some things he wants to show you. Oh my God, this can't be happening. It happens all the time, Mrs. Timmons. It isn't pleasant, but this is what happens before the end comes. We told you a few minutes ago, you weren't meant to see this part. No human is. Not anyone living, anyway. They're lying, Betty. We lived together for over 30 years. You know I'd never... Never what, Ted? Hurt her? Like stealing your Christmas savings account to pay for that new car you wanted? Sure, you lost the argument, but you knew the bank manager, didn't you, Ted? It wasn't like that. Oh, it was. And worse. 
How about the pictures you posted of Betty on the internet, Ted? Stop! Just stop for a minute. I can't stand this. I understand, Mrs. Timmons. This must be tough for you. Shut up. Just shut up. I don't know anything about you two. Ted? Yes, Betty? Tell me it isn't true, Ted. Tell me it isn't true, and I'll believe you. He can't, Mrs. Timmons. The dead have to speak only the truth. I think it's why so many of them choose to say nothing at all. Ted, tell me it isn't true. Betty, listen to me very carefully. Ted is in a dangerous place right now. We aren't here to hurt him. We only want to help him get from where he is now, in limbo, trapped between this world and the next, to where he needs to be. Is it heaven? I'm not allowed to say that, Mrs. Timmons. Surely you can appreciate my position. The living aren't allowed to know the disposition of the dead. It's one of the fundamental principles of creation. Forget your principles. This is my husband we're talking about. Yes, Mrs. Timmons, it is. And I appreciate your instinct to stand by your man, but Ted must go to his reward, whatever that is to be. We can't change that. We are only here to pick him up. Well, you can't have him until we sort this out. I shouldn't be telling you this. Smith. But Mrs. Timmons... Don't. You don't need to worry. What do you mean? All I can say is that you'll see him again. On that, I can give you my word. Are you saying what I think you're saying? I can only say this, Mrs. Timmons. It is not a new thing to anyone on this earth that death isn't the end. It is only the beginning. You will see him again. You know you'll pay for this, Smith. All we're asking, Mrs. Timmons is that you help us. Convince Ted he needs to come with us. He has to get back in the box. We'll take it from there. But he says it hurts. How can I? Mrs. Timmons, he's dead. Even he told you that. Words like hurt no longer have any real meaning. He's beyond the pain of this world. That's insane. I'm the only one that knows whether it hurts or not. Don't trust him, Mrs. Timmons. I don't know what's going on. Forget trusting any of you. Ted, you're supposed to be dead, and you two are... Here to protect you and your family. Remember, Mrs. Timmons, this isn't supposed to be seen. Tell you what, Mrs. Timmons, we'll give you a couple of minutes to be alone with him. I hope when we come back in here that you'll be ready to help us get Ted where he needs to be. Have you lost your mind? Come on, Jones. A couple of minutes. What could it hurt? Let's just use the Phobos 200 and get it over with. What the hell? I don't think it's come to that yet. I think Betty here wants Ted to get to the right place. So, humor me. Two minutes. <sighs> this one time, Smith. But I promise you, if we get in trouble for this... Then it's all on me, and I'll answer to the boss. Betty, take your time. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Ted, I'm not sure about this. Betty, I told you that I can't get back in the box. I don't know what it is. I know I'm dead, but I can't. There's no bright light, no tunnel, no friends waiting on the other side. And if it's my sins, that stuff they said, then where's the judgment? Where's St. Peter and the big book? Ted, stop. I don't know about this. And they'll be back any second. Which is why we have to get straight about what we're going to do. Ted, stop. I told you before, you never did listen. What do you mean? I mean when you were alive. You never listened to me. I listened. No, Ted, you didn't. Remember our 10th anniversary? I was sick as a dog, and you took me out for sushi. I told you over and over that I was sick, but you wanted your sushi. I didn't know, and it was good sushi. I wouldn't know, Ted. I spent the entire night throwing it up over and over again. And I knew about your little chippy. I tried to tell you that I hated you for that. I don't remember that. And I never saw... It's not that you didn't see, Ted. It's that you didn't listen. I'm listening now, Betty. But now you're dead. It's too late for you to listen. You can't do anything to change it. It's not too late. I can still listen. 
And if you don't put me back... I don't know, Ted. Maybe they're right. Maybe you need to go with them. Are you insane? I told you, it hurts. But maybe it's just something temporary, something normal. I don't care if it's normal or not. I can't go back in there. Ted, maybe it's for the best. Betty, no, you can't. Shut up, Ted. You can't do this, Betty. You don't get it. You don't tell me what to do anymore. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I just want you I to- I don't care, Ted. You have to stop now. I don't understand why, but this seems to be a decision that I have to make. Then let's make sure we make the right one, right? You're a Christian. I am too. Born one anyways. Isn't there that whole forgiveness for sins thing? Even if I was a totally evil person? Yes, Ted, we're Christians. That's supposed to be how it works. And am I... Was I... Totally evil? You know I don't think anyone is totally evil, Ted. So, don't I deserve forgiveness? Is that what you think this is about? My forgiveness? You better thank your lucky stars that it's the Lord deciding whether to forgive you or not. I'm a little short on that quality right now. So, how can I be forgiven? How can I make it up to you? I don't know, Ted. I just don't know. Sorry, Mrs. Timmons. Got another customer. You take your time. Sorry to disturb you. Great. Another dead guy. Wonder what his deal was. He was a highly decorated Marine. Oh! Stop doing that! Can't you cough or something when you come into a room? S sorry again, Mrs. Timmons, but when you're an ethereal being, there really is no polite way of entering into a conversation with the living or the dead. We simply kind of show up when we're needed. This looks like a twofer. Getting your money's worth today? Stop it, Ted. Don't speak ill of the dead. Especially not this one, Ted. Like I said, a veteran. Twelve years in, three tours. Only six years out of service. So? I would have served if needed. I had to work like a dog just for us to stay ahead. Sure, Ted. Sure. Sad case, this one, though. Why is that? Suicide case. PTSD. Couldn't take the stress of the loneliness. Such a shame. Sounds like a head case if you ask me. No one asked you. So what, he's going to hell? As I said before, Mrs. Timmons, it doesn't exactly work like that. Our soldier here is headed to a dark place indeed. Darker than old Ted here... Well, wait. I guess we never did get around to deciding that, did we? Hold on! Sure we did! Christian! Remember? I do recall you saying that, and it's on your form, Ted. But remember, you're the departed. One way or another, you will be departing. This is an accident that there is any debate on what happens next. I guess this is where I come in, huh? Not if I had anything to say about it. Shut up, Jones. This is not my fault. So what's this mess of yours I have to clean up? Strictly speaking, it's really your mess. You see... We were poised to carry Teddy here to the great beyond, and then you reopened the drawer to kiss him and caught us, well, hand in the cookie jar, so to speak. What does that have to do with me? I know he's dead. Standard protocol says if we interact with you, we gotta take you with us. What? Kill me? Just because you screwed up? It's procedure, really, and one I'd like to avoid, if possible. But you see, Mrs. Timmons, you didn't just muck things up by opening the drawer. You did say the C word. Betty! Christian, you idiot! Oh. So what about it? It's one of the major exemptions, you see, invoking religious articles. All the major religions, and most of the non-theistic beliefs, have this concept that even if you're not a great person, somehow... At the end, on your deathbed, you can skate out of damnation by invoking this exemption. It's not like Ted was a holy roller. Don't help them, Betty. Shut up, Ted. You see what I mean? I can't ever recall him in church or even saying the Lord's name except in vain. So how does that count? When you mention that concept, Ted had time in his heart to invoke that silly ritual, and now here we are. Where? The trial, you idiot! I'm afraid she's right. We'll have to put the case to the test to see if you qualify for redemption. 
Well, who gets to be the judge? Technically, you do. That whole till death do you part clause in the marriage vows. He's dead, all right, but you haven't parted ways yet. So, there we go. How does she get to be the judge? Because, you idiot, she loved you through all that crap you put her through. No one else could be fair about it. Doesn't seem fair to me. It never does to the one on trial, even in the living world. Now can we get on with it, please? Okay. What do I have to do? We'll argue both sides for and against where this idiot goes when the trial is over. Stop calling me an idiot. I call you one, Ted, because you are. With her prosecuting me, I don't stand a chance. Shut up, you idiot. I'll be the one defending you. Can we get started? I'm set on my side. You understand what has to happen here, Betty. I think so. We figure out whether I think Ted deserves a shot at heaven or not. That's right. And then what happens to me? What about your protocol? I'm hoping this may sort that out for us. But either way, we have to postpone that matter until we conclude this one. Okay? Fine. Fine. Let's get on with it instead of just talking about it. Take your time as far as I'm concerned. Shut, Shut up, up Ted. Ted. Very well. Mrs. Timmons, I won't bore you with a recitation of your drunken, unfaithful, cheap, greedy husband's shortcomings. I will simply start by reminding you that this grotesquery parading as a Christian has already had his fate decided when we got here. You are the only reason that any of this is necessary. I would like to submit the idea that you just turn your head and let this august company carry out its duty. I rest my case. Hear, hear. Well said. Stop that. You're supposed to defend me. Oh, okay. Don't worry. You are going to love my defense. I think it's really going to dazzle you. Really? Oh, yeah. Totally brilliant. Well, let's hear this brilliant defense since the prosecution was so short. Of course. <clears throat> <clears throat> Your Honor, you have known and loved my client for almost all of his life. Certainly the adult part, anyway. And it is what it is. I rest my case. That's it? It is what it is? They say brevity is the soul of wit. This is ridiculous. Betty, I know I've done wrong. I can't go back and change that. But come on. You know this isn't right. My heart wants to agree with you, but I look back on all those years and... Make sure you remember all of those years, Betty. Don't forget the good ones. What about when little Jack was born? Wasn't that a good time in our life? Back in that miserable apartment above the garage? I hated that place. I know you did, Betty. That's why I worked so hard to get ahead. I schemed, sure. I hustled for every buck I could to be able to get you what you deserved. Don't put that on me, Ted. You made your bed. You made my bed, Betty. Every night for all those years, even when I was sinning. You never kicked me out. No matter what I had done, I could always come home. Surely that meant you thought I could change. And I was a fool to do it. No, Betty. I was the fool. And now I've gone and paid for it. I'm dead. I can't hurt you anymore. The man makes a strong point. But you can hurt me, Betty. They're trying to take me to a place that I already know hurts. A lot. They do work hard down there. So, I know I was a bad man, Betty. But are you as bad as me? What do you mean? I mean, if you don't say different, you'll be the one sending me to all that pain. For eternity. So, even if I wasn't a good Christian, aren't you better than me? Don't you want to save me? Now, Ted... That's a low blow, even for you. I'd send him down just for saying that, Mrs. T. Ted, I want you to answer me a straight question. And how you answer it will pretty much tell me what I need to know. We've all heard about you, good and bad. But only you know what is truly in your heart. So, my question is, if you were me, would you forgive you? Would you grant what you ask of me? If you was me and I was you, no. Because then I'd be me and you'd be you. You see? If it were me, as bad as everyone seems to think I am, I'd say no. But my point is, you aren't me. I know that, Ted. 
So you would send me to that dark place? Well, no. Because you haven't done anything wrong that I know of. And that's my point, Ted. Only you know what you've done. Well, and us. So, knowing what you know, I'm going to give you a chance to change your answer. What do you say now? Well, if you look at it that way, yeah. <sighs> Why do you say that, Ted? Because I know what I've done. And looking back on it, I can honestly say that it wasn't done from hate or malice. I was just trying to be me and get us ahead in this world. Us and the kids. Sure, I had to break a few rules along the way. I know I even had to get rough with you. But look at your life now as compared to where we started. I'm leaving you behind with a house bought and paid for. The kids are grown. And you'll get a lot of life insurance money to do what you want with. So yeah, in the end, I'd say I did all right by you. I think I'd forgive me because of that. All right. Agents, I've made up my mind. But before I tell you what my decision is, I have a question and a favor I hope to ask of you. I don't know, Mrs. Timmons. We've broken so many rules for you already. I know. And I appreciate your position in the matter. Agent Smith, you said that because of protocol I had to go with you, so to speak. Right? Regrettably, yes, ma'am. We just can't have mortals running around blabbing about the whole process after you shuffle off the mortal coil. Be bad for business. I know. But that brings me to my question. Go ahead, Mrs. Timmons. I want to know for sure what will happen to that soldier. Well, as I said, he's a suicide, so his fate is pretty well chosen. And mine? We can't really touch you, Mrs. Timmons. You've always known where you were going. Oh, aren't you so smart, then? Shut up, Ted. I never will get tired of saying that. Ted, here's my decision. You can have my forgiveness. On one condition. Anything, Betty. You name it. You have to prove you're really a Christian by taking my forgiveness and your salvation and asking these agents to give it to that soldier. What? what? That's right, Ted. Assuming they'll let me... I'll forgive you and make you eligible to avoid the fate you deserve, but only if you volunteer to take the punishment that this brave man doesn't deserve just because of this little accident. I like the way you think, Mrs. T. That's ridiculous. You can't mean it. You can't give with one hand and then expect me to- That's exactly what I expect you to do, Ted. And I expect you to do it with a smile on your face and thank me for it. Betty. But nothing, Ted. That's my deal. Fine. I'll do it. Excellent. Hooray, we have a solution. Not quite. Am I right, Agent Smith? You're right, Betty. What are you talking about? I said I'll do it. That's right, Ted. But you see, while you were flapping your lips and making excuses about how you was just being you, I was thinking. Those of us that don't talk a lot do that. So what? You're no Einstein. No, but she's clever, Mr. Timmons. Much cleverer than I or you gave her credit for. Well played, Mrs. Timmons. I assume we're thinking along the same line? Absolutely, Agent Smith. I'm ready to get started whenever you are. What? What's going on? You see, Ted, we have to take three lives. Betty forgave you. You would have gone upstairs, but the soldier gets that fate. You take his place on the express train downtown. But there's still the matter of accounting for your sins. Just because she forgave you and you, like a mandatory good Samaritan, volunteered for his fate, your own transgressions have yet to be accounted for. So? You see, Ted, I'll pay your bill for you. The way I figure it, it should be a few eons and then you'd have been out of there. She's right, you know. What you did was bad, but eternal? Like a suicide? Nah, a couple thousand years at worst. Wait a minute now. That's not fair. I think it's very fair, Ted. And that brings me to the nature of my favor, Agent Smith. I think I read your mind. And I was wondering the same thing. What could we in the afterlife do with a woman of your talents? You're smart, resourceful. You even have a nice judgmental side that I particularly like. But we couldn't start you off with anything too high-profile. 
You would be a trainee. I realize that, Agent Smith. And I'm ready to start at the very bottom. That would really be something like, oh, look here, welcoming new arrivals with orientation and getting settled in generally. Does that sound about right? Perfect. So, what? You're like some kind of demon now? <laughs> I'm your demon now, Ted. What? Stop it with that. She's right. As a trainee, she'll have to prove herself to the boss. I think you've hit the nail on the head with this one, Mrs. T. Nice choice. You'll have fun busting his hump. That's not fair. Fair or not, Ted. You made the choices. Every step of the way, you made the choices. I said till death do us part. And I'm sorry that I have to leave you. But you understand I have a job, right? That has to come first. You understand. Enough talk. We are out of here. Nine one one. This is Sam at the morgue. You won't believe this. I've got a lady here. Looks like she had a heart attack. Yeah, she's dead on the floor here. She's dead, all right. Anything unusual? Not about her behavior, but, well, I gotta tell you, I've been a morgue tech for 15 years, and I've never seen a corpse smiling as big as this one is. I guess she died happy. The Box was performed by Zach Guest as Greg, Riley McBride as Sam, Haley Guillot as Betty, Trey Piper as Ted, Seth Leek as Agent Smith, Hannah Dupre Severance as Agent Jones. Written, produced, and created by Scott D. Ford. Music by Chester Dabrowski IV. Sound engineer, Chuck Dickin. Edited by Shana McBride and Scott D. Ford. Directed by Christy Leak and Scott D. Ford. Produced in cooperation with WFWM 91.9 FM, Frostburg, Maryland. This program is a work of fiction. Any similarity to anyone living or dead is entirely coincidental.